For more on this, we're joined from Durham, North Carolina by Dr. Shane Chung Chow. He's a professor of biostatistics and bioinformatics at Duke's University School of Medicine. Professor Chow, good to have you with us this evening. Yes, thank you. So, Professor Chow, in greater detail and in somewhat basic terms, what exactly are biosimilars? Uh, basically, a biosimilar product is a similar biological product, such as the protein product, a vaccine, or the blood product, whose the, uh, the active uh, the drug substance uh, is made uh, by the, uh, a living organism or derived from a, a living organism. A similar, similar is in a sense that uh, is similar to the uh, innovator drug product in terms of the uh, safety, purity, and uh, potency. Okay, now it's quite a complicated process to make them, and they're not exactly like the original, unlike generics. What are some of the other differences between biosimilars and generics? The fundamental differences between a uh, generic drug product and the biosimilar is that uh, generic, a generic drug product is a small molecule chemical compound and, uh, which contains the identical, identical, not a similar active drug in ingredient as the uh, brand name drug product. Uh, the uh, biosimilar, on the other hand, they are, they are similar, uh, similar, not identical biologic product. So that's a reason I think that there's a fundamental differences between the two. So I think the biosimilar product, they are not a generic drug product. Now, Professor Chow, many are calling this a game changer if it is approved in the U.S. What kind of diseases do these biosimilars treat? Uh, what, what can biosimilars be used for? Uh, basically, the biologic product has been used in treating their critical and uh, the, uh, over the uh, life-threatening diseases, uh, such as the uh, cancer or the, uh, the uh, cardiovascular diseases. A typical example would be the uh, uh, Herceptans uh, made by the uh, Genetech uh, for treating the uh, bre breast cancer. And uh, the, uh, the, the, unfortunately, I think the, the patent the, on the uh, Herceptans, I mean, the, uh, expires the, uh, in the, uh, 2014 in Europe, and uh, where expired in the uh, uh, United States, I think, in the uh, 2019. Uh, this uh, certainly uh, provided some opportunity for the biosimilar manufacturers uh, the, uh, for the U.S. market. Well, we know that a biosimilar used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease has just been approved in Europe. My question is, are biosimilars as effective as the original drug that they replicate once the patent expires? Yeah, when uh, the uh, patent expires, I think the uh, the uh, the uh, biosimilar company they can uh, the uh, fire the uh, the uh, biosimilar the uh, applications for the uh, biosimilar approval, and uh, since they are the uh, the uh, similar, I mean the biological product, uh, the regular agency they do not really re require. I think that you have to go through the uh, full scale clinical development uh, for the uh, approval. Uh, in order to uh, demonstrate the safety and the efficacy of the drug product. So this uh, definitely will cut down the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the development, I mean, the uh, cost uh, by uh, quite a lot. So the biosimilar, I mean, the uh, product uh, is expected to uh, reduce the, uh, the, the cost by about 30%. Yeah, absolutely. They're expected to cost uh, anywhere from 20 to 30% less than brand name drugs. Now. So far, they've been approved in Europe, they've been approved in Canada. What is the status regarding U.S. approval? The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, is looking into this. Where do we stand on that? Uh, basically, I think the, 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 the FDA, they was uh, authorized to approve by a similar product uh, the, uh, since uh, the uh, 2000, 2009, when the, uh, the BPCI the applies the uh, uh, the, the uh, biological price, the Competition uh, Innovation Act uh, was uh, the, uh, passed by the U.S. Congress. Uh, since then, I think the FDA has hosted the, uh, well, the uh, one public meetings in 2011 and the two uh, the, uh, public hearings in uh, 2010, 2012. And uh, thus far, FDA, they have uh, the, uh, published the uh, four guidance, uh, three guidance published in uh, 2012. 
and uh, the one uh, published in the uh, 2014 that's on the uh, clinical pharmacology. And uh, one of the successful, I mean, uh, the biosimilar submission, you may be aware that I think the, uh, the, uh, on the January 7th uh, this year, and uh, the, uh, the uh, oncology, the uh, drug advisory committee, all that, they uh, recommend the approval for the, uh, uh, the Sandals, I mean, the uh, submission, biosimilar submissions. Uh, the, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the biosimilar product uh, the, to the uh, Neupergen of the Amgen. So uh, that's uh, pretty much the current, I mean, the, uh, the uh, FDA right. the status, and uh, they, they were expected to uh, review and then approve the more biosimilar submissions in the future. Well, if it does get approved, many are calling it a big game changer in the U.S. and that it will have a significant effect in bringing down costs. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Dr. Shane Chung Chow, Professor of Biostatistics and Bioinformatics at Duke University School of Medicine.